That was a video uploaded last night by the Philippine Star on Facebook. Powerful lightning struck the Tau volcano area as seen from Halang, Lipa City and Batangas. So the Tau volcano in the Philippines erupted last night. This is the day after. This is a big thing for the history of the Philippines, history of the world, because firstly, the Tau volcano is the smallest volcano in the world, not just in the Philippines. It also hasn't erupted since 1977. We first heard about this yesterday when uh, we were sat here in our apartment here in uh, Taguig in Metro Manila in BGC. We started getting messages on Instagram telling us that the Tau volcano had erupted. We then started getting a lot of messages and a lot of photos. A lot of our followers are from the area, living in the area, um, and we were getting all these photos through, which was pretty scary. Um, last night we were out and about, and and even though we'd heard about this, we didn't. We know it's fairly close to Manila, but we didn't expect there to be any effect on Manila. But as we were coming home last night, you might have seen the short video we uploaded yesterday. When we got home, there was ash fall right outside our doorstep on the pavement. Everyone outside was wearing masks and it was all anyone's been talking about since um, on social media, on Instagram, on Twitter. Actually super dark outside. There's loads of, um, I don't know if it's connected to it. I, I assume it is. It seems it is really hazy outside and there's these loads of big dark clouds um, and there's just ash every I'll show you the balcony in a minute there's ash all over the balcony there's a roof uh, a rooftop down there where you can see all this ash just built up <coughs> we were lying in bed last night and it was quite scary because we were kind of reflecting on it I think I think when we heard what had happened we were like oh no there's been a volcano eruption that's really bad is everyone safe but then we started thinking more about how it's actually a tourist attraction, how people every day are climbing up onto the crater um, and it's like a, a huge tour and like when you go to Tagai Tai, that is what you do there. The fact that we've actually been there and we've stood on that crater and looked at this beautiful blue water and flying the drone and like taken photos and like done this amazing hike up there and then now that's just a huge ball of ash and lava and smoke and how the people's homes were on that piece of land um, and all the horses and I mean these people won't have homes now and they also like the people won't go there as a tourist attraction anymore so they've lost like their homes and their livelihood um, so it's really really sad and also very scary thinking that like imagine if you were there when it happened when you got the alert that there was smoke coming I don't know I don't know the logistics of it I, I'm assuming people got on I don't I still don't think anyone's been hurt I assume people just got onto the boat climbed down got onto the boats and went and I assume they had enough time. I assume there were tours on that day. I don't, I don't know enough. So let me know in the comments if you've got any more information on that. If there were actually people on the volcano when it happened. Um, because I don't know if it was just a sudden thing or if it like was a sort of slow build up. We've also been getting loads of messages like George said on Instagram and everything. And one person commented on our video we put on last night saying um, something along the lines of um, I hope you don't leave because of this. I hope you haven't sort of been scared off. And I just replied... Um, I just, so I just replied and said, we're not going anywhere. We'll always love the Philippine attitude of getting through it together. And I think things like this, like the Manila earthquake we experienced um, last year, and um, people often message us and say, I hope you're not leaving because of this. And yes, it's scary. Yes, it's unlike anything we've ever experienced in England. I mean, I was saying to George, I used to learn about volcanoes in geography when I was in school. And I didn't expect that I'd live somewhere where there was like ash outside my doorstep from volcanic eruption. Like it is mind blowing for us because it's so different to where we're from. But the Filipino mentality and attitude of just taking it, thinking, OK, this has happened. How are we going to get through it? Let's get through it together. It's just something that is just very, very unusual, very, very special and something that Filipinos should be really, really proud of. So I'm just doing some further research here and the alert level yesterday went up from an alert level three, which means relatively high unrest. Eruption is possible within weeks. They pushed it up to alert level four, which is intense unrest. Hazardous eruption is possible within days, which means there could be an even bigger eruption, a proper with lava flow, etc. It says here on CNN that there's been a request for a total evacuation of those within a 17 kilometer, which is 10.6 miles radius around the volcano. This area is considered a volcanic danger zone. It's home to more than 450,000 residents. CNN say that even though Tau Volcano is small, it is actually considered one of the world's most dangerous uh, because of the number of people that live in its immediate vicinity. Advice here, what to do during ashfall. 
listen to the radio for updates. We don't have Philippines radio available to us here, so maybe some of you don't as well if you're from the Philippines. Hopefully, hopefully this video can help other people are making videos. I think most of the advice is going around on social media as well. Even things like washing your fruit and vegetables thoroughly before eating them, closing all your windows and doors. I did read about turning air conditioning off, um, which we did for a while, and then we did some more research into it because someone said you don't have to do that because aircon actually brings air from the inside of the room. Um, rather than bring in hazardous air from the outside. We did some research and a few different sources told us that that was true, but obviously don't take my word for it. Make your own decision on the air con situation. Other things, cover your, cover your nose and mouth. Wear glasses or sunglasses if you have to go out. Some of the health effects of the asphalt can be nose and throat irritation, coughing, bronchitis-like illness, discomfort while breathing, eye irritation, minor skin problems. This is one thing I love about um, the community we personally have on social media is that everyone is sharing advice, everyone is looking out for each other, everyone is kind of getting through this together in the Filipino mentality that we've seen several times when uh, things like this happen in the country. So, someone put here, love and prayers from us all. We were at Mike and Nelly's last night and we don't actually have any of these masks. Um, but we've got these like, they're like more medical masks, they're in black and we got a ton of comments in last night's video saying guys they're not good enough, um, these sort of keep out infections and things but they don't keep out actual ash and the air, I think there's something about the air being like small pieces of glass um, so you can't actually see it but you're breathing it in through this um, and we also had some comments saying that if you don't have the N26 masks then you can layer up two pieces of tissue then you're like doubly protected um, and also I need to make sure I bend this part on the nose so now I'm supposedly more protected but ideally we use the N26 mask and um, we might try and get some a bit later um, we'll go out wearing goggles or sunglasses and these because we've been advised to get them and that they're a lot better um, I don't know if we'll be able to get any now but we might try later but we're not sure yet but I'm going to head out into the balcony now just to quickly show you guys I'm not going to be out there for long as we said it's not good being outside but let me show you this quick so you guys can see here the ash all over the balcony and also on top of this roof and um, this is all ash this is built up all over here last night and everywhere just looks super dark and hazy and cloudy but yeah i'm gonna get back inside now mike and ellie have just messaged us saying they have headaches haven't they and eye, yeah. eye irritation and things we're coughing slightly in here um the aircon thing as i said do your own research but all oh, seem to be okay yeah, these ones. We, we slept we don't feel that fun we don't feel funny we don't have headaches um slight cough but i had a slight cough anyway so you don't really know if it's related or not and it doesn't seem like it's over yet there we've had messages this morning saying people are feeling earthquakes in cavita um, the asphalt has made it all the way through metro manila up uh, Quezon city and i've just seen a tweet this morning that uh, nelly shared in our whatsapp group from merapi news saying the pacific ring of fire is very active at the moment reportedly three volcanoes erupted in a span of 24 hours. A mountain in Mexico, a mountain in Japan, and Mount Tao in the Philippines. This is the photo that most surprised me from the eruption. Just look at the smoke there. This is the volcano, and the smoke is just incredible. I also read that the part that everyone calls Tao Volcano, the small crater next to the lake, is actually only part of the story, and that in fact the whole thing really is the volcano. And this has hit the world news. It's on BBC News, CNN, Bloomberg, The Guardian in the UK. It's absolutely everywhere online. And someone has just sent me this, which shows that there has been lava coming out of Tao at 3.20 a.m. this morning. I actually have a headache now. I don't know if that's just in my head, but I've gone outside for like two seconds. Um, and now I have a headache like I did last night. Um, tips if you are going outside make sure you have a shower uh, if you have to go out for work or something I mean we're lucky we don't have to go to an office today I don't know if people's jobs are being like put on hold if they're allowed to have days off because of it um, but there are a huge amount of cars out and a huge amount of people walking around still in BGC so I assume offices are still saying come in um, but like don't go out on your lunch break if you can um, shower wear goggles or sunglasses cover your eyes nose and mouth um, it's just better to be safe than sorry. I don't know what the current rec like suggestion is of like if you should. I assume you're not meant to go outside now, right? I don't know. I guess not. I, I, we also have no. Oh, look at that huge cloud! I think it's about look that rain. You can see rain. Yeah. Is that a good thing? Is that going to wash it all away, or is that just going to make it all come down worse? Oh yeah, look at this. Just think about it. This huge cloud. I mean, I don't know the science behind it, but if there's all this ash in the glass stuff in the air. 
if rain comes, they just go vroom, and like drop it all. We don't know, this is the thing, because- I don't know about it. Because we're from the UK, we are, we're not used to this kind of thing at, at all. all. Um, so this is not normal for us at all. We have no idea how long this is gonna last, how long we're supposed to stay indoors for. Yeah. We've got a flight booked in a couple of days, whether or not the airport will be up and running, and that will go ahead. A lot of people's travel plans over the last few days would have been uh, completely ruined, and probably yeah. for the next few days. So anyway, um, stay safe. Usual programming will resume on our channel yeah. very, very soon, but stay safe if you're affected by this, and thinking of everyone who's been evacuated and been uh, more deeply affected by this, and who won't be able to return home for a little while. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're talking about it from our point of view um, for a few reasons, to give information, um, to share what we know, to show what it's like where we are, but we know that we're the lucky ones, really, because obviously we're experiencing a bit of ash, and if we get a headache, we get a headache, but it's the people that are actually there in Batangas, in Tagaytay, in Cavite, that ones that are actually experiencing it more so. Um, so yeah, we're thinking of you. Um, thank you for watching and we'll see you very soon in another video.